Well, good morning, uh, Pataskla Nazarene. Uh, it is hard to believe that uh, this Palm Sunday, and uh, just, again, thinking about, I never dreamed that Palm Sunday and Holy Week and an Easter Sunday would be like they are, but they are. And uh, the good news, though, as I've always reflected on uh, during these weeks, has been that Jesus is still Lord. Uh, we ser still serve the, the King of all kings, and that uh, we come here to worship Him. We come here to celebrate Him. And uh, this morning in my devotions, I, uh, I came across a scripture, and I read in the Old Testament, New Testament, different things. But uh, this morning from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, I came across this and was reminded of how appropriate it is for us during this time. It says, we are pressed, but not crushed. We're perplexed, but we don't give up and quit. We're hunted down, but God never abandons us. We get knocked down, but we get up and keep going. And that's us. That's the church. That's how we, we work and uh, because of who we serve. And so this morning as uh, we worship him, I pray that the Lord will help us, that he'll encourage us. I want you to be encouraged in your faith. I know that these are hard times and uh, it's difficult to think how long it might be before we're back together again. But uh, I just want to encourage you. And uh, in Philippians chapter 4, it says that uh, don't worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. And uh, part of the prayer is also thanksgiving. So today, think about some of the things you're thankful for. Some of the things that you know God has provided for you that just has made a difference in your life. And, uh, and be grateful. And then also, bring Him your needs, whatever those needs are. We know that the Lord hears our prayers. And so would you join me in prayer as we begin this service? Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you that you are Lord and that, Lord, because of that, there's nothing that surprised you about anything that's going on and that, Lord, uh, we can trust you with anything we're concerned about. And so, Lord, we pray that you would just be with your church these days. And, Lord, we especially pray for those who are are not feeling so well or still healing up from surgeries. And we, we pray for Rob Urban, especially today. And Lord, we're grateful. Some of the things we've heard more recently about him walking uh, with, a, with assistance and uh, just making some progress there. We're grateful for that. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for some answered prayers for uh, Leslie Wade's uh, friend, Shelby. And Lord, we just give you the thanks for what you've done and are doing for her. And Lord, we just pray for folks in our congregation like Bob Delilo and uh, Betty Paw and Sue Colburn and Art Goswick and several others, Lord, that have been through a lot in recent weeks and, Lord, just need your help. And so, Lord, we pray you touch them and help them. And Lord, we also pray that you would be with those who are on the front lines of all this, uh, doctors and nurses and assistants to them and those that are working in the hospitals. May, Lord, they just find in you protection and peace and strength and Lord give them rest when they're just so exhausted that they don't know how they're going to keep going may Lord they just find strength that you will give them and so Lord watch over them Lord we also want to celebrate we want to celebrate the birth of uh, little Jacob Lyde and Lord we just are thankful for Nick and Katie and Nathan and now little uh, Jacob and we just pray that you'd be with them and Lord uh, we pray that you'd also be with Tyler and Kelston as they're expecting soon uh, to have a little one and uh, may even be here by the time uh, we get a chance to see all this. But Lord, bless them and watch over them, we pray. And Lord, uh, just give wisdom to those who are leading our nation. Lord, to not only our president and vice president, but Lord Congress, and as well as our governor and our local officials. Just give them all the wisdom that's needed for these times. And Lord, uh, help us to just understand that in these times that you have not abandoned us, that, Lord, though we do feel pressure, maybe we feel afraid, that, Lord, uh, you are here with us, and, Lord, your presence makes the difference for us. So, Lord, we give you love, and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, uh, Pastor Kayla is going to lead us in a couple of worship songs, and uh, I trust that uh, you'll join in or, or listen and allow the words of the music to be able to just minister to your heart during this time. Hey church, super excited to um, have you tuned in to worship. Uh, God is so good despite all that's going on, and so I pray that 
Um, this time will refresh your soul um, that we can all proclaim the name of God unified together um, during this time. The first song we're going to be singing is called Our God is Greater. This is a Sunday, Palm Sunday, and uh, I wanted to draw our attention this morning to Matthew's account of the story that we find in Matthew 21 about Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem. And in my Bible, there's a heading that says, Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. And uh, as I was thinking about that, I was also missing the fact that most Palm Sundays, we have our kids come up to the sanctuary and they're parading around the sanctuary and waving the palm branches and uh, just I miss that but uh, we'll have opportunities for that again but if you have kids in your family and you have them there at home with you right now even watching this maybe have them uh, walk around if you have palm branches use them but uh, if you don't just have them go around raising their hands singing Hosanna because that'd be an appropriate way to celebrate this day but as we uh, come to this day and we come to this time I was thinking about this story that we find in, in Matthew 21 and, and how it connects with everything that Jesus has been doing in, the, in this gospel. And everywhere Jesus went, uh, there was healing, 
there was health. Everywhere he went, there was grace, there was forgiveness. And it all reminds us that that's what the kingdom of God is all about. It's about God coming among us, coming to bring his kingdom, coming to bring what we need as his people. And so on this day, we want to celebrate the King of Kings, the one who comes to us. And so in Matthew chapter 21, uh, we read these words uh, beginning in the first verse. It says, as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, that Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say, the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And the disciples went and did as Jesus instructed them. And they brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on him for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. On this Palm Sunday, we welcome the king. We join a crowd who celebrate this one who has come. And as this story begins, I just want you to picture for just a moment that Jesus comes and he's on the Mount of Olives. He has not entered Jerusalem quite yet. And he's on the Mount of Olives. And in between the Mount of Olives and Jerusalem is the Kidron Valley. And he's overlooking the city of Jerusalem. And uh, Jerusalem, it's the place where Jewish kings are crowned. It's the place where the government of the Jewish people was focused. But it was also the place where the temple was. Because for the Jewish people, it was never just about the government. It was about both the government, the, the leadership, but also about their worship. And so as Jesus comes to Jerusalem, there's some interesting things that happen. And in the, in the passage right after what I just read, it, it tells how Jesus enters Jerusalem and he goes at first to the temple. And there he turns over tables and he throws out the money changers and he says, this is to be a house of prayer. This, this has become a den for thieves instead of a house of prayer. And he begins to help people see what's happened to their city and to their, their, their faith and that they'd kind of lost perspective. They'd lost their focus. And then a couple chapters later, in Matthew 23, we, we read how Jesus sees the city of Jerusalem and, and thinks again and says he begins to weep over the city. And it says that he weeps over the city because God has sent prophet after prophet after prophet. And continually, the people rejected what God had to say through the prophets. And in chapter 23, verse 27, it simply says, but you were not willing. As I was thinking about that, I, I was just wondering, uh, are there any things in our lives that maybe we're just not yet willing to let God come in and make a difference, to let God come in and, and maybe change? My prayer that during this time where we're away from each other as far as being able to be in the same room together, that, that God's kind of working on our souls a little bit. That uh, he's taking this time in our lives to have us reevaluate what's really important, what really matters. And I just wonder if God might want to do some things in our lives that uh, could be forever changes for the good. And so con consider today that as we welcome the king, that we're welcoming the one who does want to make a difference in our lives. Well, as this story goes, we, we read how Jesus told a couple of his disciples to go on ahead and to, to find a donkey, and with the donkey would be a colt, and says, untie him and bring him to me, and if anyone questions, if the owner questions it at all, all they had to say is, the Lord needs them. You know, I thought about that. 
are we living in such a way that if the Lord needs whatever we have, we're willing to say yes, Lord? Are we willing to just say, whatever you want, Lord, we're willing? Well, as the story goes on, it says that the disciples went and did just as Jesus had instructed them. And, you know, as disciples, that's what we do. Jesus tells us and we respond. I also want us to notice something else in this particular passage. And again, I hope your Bibles are open and you can see these, these words. But it says that what took place there was to fulfill what the Scripture said. I don't know if the last time you've read the book of Zechariah. Uh, it's one of those minor prophets that often it gets overlooked or it's not read frequently. But in Zechariah 9.9, 9, this is what it actually says that gets quoted here in Matthew. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem, see, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Throughout Matthew's gospel, there's that word fulfills. And it reminds me that, you know, everything that God promises, he keeps the promise. Everything he says to us, we can count on it being the case. I think about uh, how Matthew's gospel ends. Matthew's gospel, the last word to us from Jesus is this, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. What a promise. And even now, God's keeping that promise for us. He's with us. He's, he's with us right all the way through everything we're going through. Jesus always fulfills the promises of God. Well, in the middle of this crisis we're in, we're promised that Jesus will not abandon us, that he'll be with us. And so I trust that you'll keep holding on to him. And if you're discouraged today, uh, I understand that. We're all a bit discouraged by some of the things that we hear, kind of how things are. But you know what? We're in this together. We're in this because we're we're the people of God and we're going to hold on to each other and we're going to help each other all the ways we can. And we're going to be through this. We're going to get on the other side of this. And God's going to help us to get there. Well, we also want to get to the heart of this story because it's when the people begin to gather around as Jesus has the, the donkey and the colt that have been brought and, and the cloaks of a couple of the disciples are put on the, the donkey and, and Jesus is able to get on. And then people begin to lay their cloaks and they lay the palm branches and everything on the road. And it says there that uh, they, they sang, sing out, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Those are words of praise. Those are words of thanksgiving. Those are words that tell us that God saves through this person, Jesus. So Palm Sunday, it's a, it's a day to celebrate our king. And sometimes we just need to be reminded that he is king. Sometimes we, we get caught up in all the other things that are going on in this world right now. And we forget, maybe, that uh, we serve the king of all kings. And I trust that today on this Palm Sunday that we'll all welcome the King in our lives and that we be reminded to honor Him and worship Him on this day. You know that uh, many times throughout the course of a year, I, I kind of remind us all of uh, the whole essence of worship. And here's the quote that I'll share with you. Worship is the strategy by which we interrupt our preoccupation with ourselves in order to give our attention to God. So I thought about that. I thought about this story. This particular time, everybody's attention's on Jesus. As he enters Jerusalem, everybody is focused on him. And I think that's how worship is supposed to be. Focus on Jesus. But here's one of my concerns. That this time where we're kind of all quarantined in, in a sense, and it's very easy in this time to just kind of be focused on ourselves. It's one of those times where we're only maybe a few people in one house, or maybe you're all alone. And, uh, you know, it's easy to be self-concerned. And we understand that, and we recognize there's some positive things about that. But could I just encourage you today 
to not just get so consumed with whatever might be on your plate, whatever might be kind of controlling the way you think, but that we'll also always remember that uh, true worship gives our attention to God. And so don't forget to give your focus of your life on Him. God wants to meet us where we are, and uh, He does just that. Even on a day like this, even in times like these, He's with us. Well, I want to come to the end of this story. It says in the, near the end of this story that as Jesus entered Jerusalem, that the whole city was stirred, and they began to ask, Who is this? I got curious about that word, stirred. And I began to look it up and to find out a little more of what it means. And it comes from a Greek word that, that means to be moved or to be shaken or even to quake. And we have a word that kind of comes from this Greek word, and it's called seismic. And we all know that that word's associated with earthquakes. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, it stirred everything up. It, it changed everything the world. And I know if you're at all like I am when it comes to the presence of Jesus in our lives, he changes things. He stirs some things up. And there may be some of us during this time where maybe we're a little bit stagnant. Maybe we're feeling like uh, things are just so plain that, uh, you know, because we're a little stir crazy, <laughs> having to be in, in our houses all the time and not being able to be out and around a lot of people. Maybe Jesus wants to come and stir some things up in our lives as well. Maybe he wants to come and just uh, help us to see maybe some things that need to change. Maybe to help us to, to remember to not fear, but to trust. Whatever it is, he, he might be shaking up in our lives. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe we've become numb to our spiritual lives. Or, or maybe we've just kind of been kind of on the just coasting spiritually and we just need to let the Lord come and shake us in closing uh, here this morning I, I just want to kind of throw out an idea to you and the good thing for you is that you're you're there in your home in some place that uh, no one else is necessarily going to see this but could I just ask you to do something just a little bit different here at the close of this message uh, would you go get a coat or get a, a jacket or get a blanket and uh, and bring it to wherever you're seated right now. get out that blanket or that coat or whatever I'd, as you lay it there on the floor it's just a reminder of that first Palm Sunday as people were welcoming the king and I just want you to think about this blanket or this coat laying on the floor in your life as a, just another way to say Jesus you're welcome as king of my life you're welcome as king of my home you're you're the lord of my life and then as we do so we'll just recognize that uh, with Jesus as King, uh, he'll help us through all the things that we go through and that uh, he will be with us in it all. And there may be some of us who right now just need to pray and uh, make that a prayer to welcome Jesus as King of our lives. And so would you join me in prayer? Lord Jesus, we come and we lay before you this welcome mat, this red carpet for you, so to speak, to come and to be Lord of our lives and Lord of our homes, that you will be king. And Lord, we pray that you would cleanse away from us anything that would be unlike what you would want for us. Or if there's any sin in our lives, we pray, Father, that you would cleanse it from our, our lives. We pray, Father, if there are any things in our lives that are have been defeating us, have been discouraging us, have been getting us down, that Lord, as we let you be Lord of our lives, that, Lord, you would just bring health and healing to our hearts and that we'll recognize that, Lord, you are our Lord and we trust you 
And we thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. We thank you, Lord, for the, the strength that you can give us in our lives. And so, Lord, today, as we welcome you, we, we welcome you into our hearts. We welcome you, Lord, into every aspect of our being. May you be Lord. We thank you today that we are children of the King. And we celebrate you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I want you to just take a moment and uh, listen as Pastor Kayla shares with us a final song, a song that celebrates Jesus as our King, that reminds us that uh, we belong to Him. God bless you, and uh, during this Holy Week, I pray that it will be a holy time as we allow the King of Kings to lead us through this week as we move towards the cross on Good Friday, and then as we move towards Easter next Sunday. God bless you. Have a great day. I'm so thankful to get to hear the word of God and to be reminded that he is the King of Kings, that no matter what is going on in the world around us, we can claim him as our King because he is our King. He has saved us and sacrificed his life for us, and we can put our full trust in him knowing that he is the King of Kings. This next song we're singing is actually called The King of Kings. Um, and I uh, recommended you guys watch it on YouTube a couple weeks ago. Um, and man, it is one of the most powerful songs I've heard. And um, it just gives me chills every time I listen to it and sing it. So I encourage you um, to take it all in. Sometimes when I'm hearing a song for the first time, um, I just listen. And um, sometimes that's the most powerful thing to do. So if you feel led, just listen to these words. If you want to sing along, please go for it. I'm so excited to be able to um, share King of Kings with you guys. <laughs> 